Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So this is going to be a rather short video and something completely different to my normal content, but I just had to show you this. Now there would be no purchase links in the video description because this radio is over 40 years old. And unless you have a time machine, you have next to zero hope of buying one new. Now about 20 years ago, someone loaned me one of these radios. It's a Yaesu FT225RD. Now, I only had it for a few days, but since then, I've been on the lookout for a good example, which appears to be quite rare these days. Now, the FT225RD was produced by Yesu in Japan between 1978 and then sometime in the 1980s, it ceased production. Now, this radio is single band only, and that's the 2 meter VHF band supporting from 144 megahertz to 148 megahertz. It's all mode, so that's lower sideband, upper sideband, CW, AM, and of course FM. Now power output was rated back then to be 8 watts on AM, 25 watts on FM and CW, and 24 watts PP on sideband. It has an inbuilt power supply, so that means you only have to hook it up to your wall main socket to get it powered up. Of course, a suitable antenna is also required. Okay, Roger. Yeah, I thought it was an ICOM. Um... I was going to say, if it was a, if it was a Yesu, we could have done some C4FM. Um, I was just chatting to the station over in Sandy, and um, yeah, they're on a 991A, and I tried C4FM yesterday um, with a gentleman in Luton on a yeah, similar signal to what we've got at the minute. I'm getting you about 5 and 5. Now, when I purchased this radio, the seller told me that it had a Mutec front end and the optional memory unit was installed. However, I could never get the memory unit to work and I cannot confirm if it actually has a Mutec front end. If you know how these memory modules work, let us know down in the comments. Now, one of the nicest things about this radio is the VFO. It's just so smooth, and it's really well geared. Repeater shift is possible, and it has built-in tone burst, but no CTCSS as standard. Now, I have seen others perform modifications which allow CTCSS selection using that channel change control, but to be honest, I just want to leave this radio completely standard as I have other radios that can work through repeaters anyway. Now, incidentally, there was actually a previous version to this radio, and I think it was called the FT221, which has a black front panel, but no LED frequency readout. Now, I don't think I've actually seen any of those for sale online. Now, the band control literally chooses one meg sections, either 144, 145, 146, and 147. So it can actually take some time to get from the bottom of the two meter band to the top. Now the rear panel has a whole load of sockets plus a massive heatsink. Options for ALC, speaker output, PTT, etc. are all available there. Strictly no USB on this radio, and that's mainly because, well, it just wasn't invented back then. Now the power input is something different too. The plug and the prongs are something that I've not seen before. Now to be fair, I've not really owned any old ham radio gear. And well, this is probably the first, so that power plug might be the norm. Now I did perform some little transmission tests into a dummy load, and I recorded the results for you to see. Um, zero DQW testing, mic zero Delta Quebec whiskey testing. Um, zero DQW testing, one, two, three, four, five, over. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing upper sideband, M Zero DQW testing upper sideband on the FT 225RD, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. That's a lot more power than I saw. M Zero DQW testing into a dummy load, M Zero DQW, one, two, three, four. I was actually quite surprised by the sideband whistle test. The power meters showed it peaking at nearly 30 watts. I've actually used this radio on air and I actually had good audio reports as well. Okay, so let's take a look inside this beast. First, we'll take off that top cover. Now, this is actually quite easy because it doesn't require a screwdriver. There's just four plastic clips which just need putting out and then the top cover comes off. Now, just be careful if you're going to do this yourself, assuming you own one, because the internal speaker is actually connected on a fairly short wire. Now I'm not going to lie here and pretend that I know what all of this does, but just look at this. It's nice to see each section has been carefully labelled, so any potential engineer that needs to perform a repair instantly knows what area to look 
for any of the tuning procedures. Now on the top left is a massive power supply and this is probably one of the reasons why this radio weighs nearly 9 kilograms. In the middle at the bottom you can see the VFO housing and that whole thing is for the VFO. Right, let's turn it over and have a look inside the bottom. Now, don't be rude. Now, as I took off that bottom base plate, you could see the memory unit attached to the bottom. And this does actually take two AA batteries, which of course I have replaced, but made no difference. Now, the memory unit is connected to the radio by this little umbilical cord. And yep, I made sure it was the right way around and it was fully home. Now, wow, just look at all those wires. We can safely say that the production time on these older radios will be vastly longer than any of today's modern radios. Again, I'm not too sure where that Mutech front end would fit, but if you know, then let us know down in the comments below. Now just look at that VFO. Here we can see the smooth gears turning as I adjust the VFO on the front panel. It's as smooth as silk. Now when I first took the bottom cover off, I was literally shocked at the amount of wires there. Now I used to build computer controlled infrared transmitters for a company when I left school and even those back then did not have that many wires. And modern day radios just do not look like this anymore, unless of course you are home brewing, but even the most of us design circuit boards that can just be replaced if they go wrong. Now this is definitely a work of art. Now do you know what the most dangerous part of all this is? Well, it's not what you think. Well, at least for me. It's the fact that these older radios just have an immense nostalgic feel and after purchasing this FT225RD, it's left me wanting more. So, my question to you is what vintage ham radio should I buy next? Leave your suggestions in the comments below and of course if any of you guys want to donate any old radio gear to the channel then just drop us an email. Now in the near future, I do actually have a new 2 meter Yagi beam antenna to test. So I will put this radio to the test when I do that video. So don't worry, you're going to see this radio again and you're going to see it in use. Let us know in the comments what your favourite old radio is and if you still own it. Or if there was that radio that just got away that you've never owned but you really want, let us know down in the comments which radio that is. Until next video, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.